Welcome to your Algebra 2 Capstone Lesson 1. Um, we're, today we're going to do an integral exponent review. So just to remind you of the exponent rules, if you are multiplying two um, powers with the same base, you have a to the m times a to the n, that's going to equal a to the m plus n. If you have a power to a power, a to the m to the nth power, you multiply m times n. If you have a to the m over a to the n, that's a to the m minus n. If you have a times b all to the nth power, that's going to be a to the nth times b to the nth. a to the zero power is equal to 1. a to the negative n is 1 over a to the nth. a over b to the nth flat power is a to the nth over b to the nth. a over b to the negative n, the negative there means you use the reciprocal, so we have b over a to the nth power. All right, so for our first example, um, part A, we have m to the 8th times m to the 6th. So what are we going to do? That's right, we're going to add those exponents together to get m to the 8th plus 6, which is m to the 14th. For B, we've got m to the 5th times p to the 4th. So what are we going to do there? Nothing, because we have different bases. So there's nothing we can do. For part C, we've got negative 5 p to the 4th times negative 9 p to the fifth. So we're going to multiply negative 5 times negative 9 and that gives us 45. p to the fourth times p to the fifth. We add the exponents together and we get p to the ninth. For part d, that's going to be a problem to try on your own. That's going to be something that's kind of different in this unit is that we've embedded the problems to try on your own and so we'll go over this when you get to class. All right, for example two, we've got 29 to the zero power. Please excuse Daisy and or Scout from barking there. We've got 29 to the zero power, and so anything to the zero power is equal to one. The only thing is a zero to the zero power is undefined, but this is 29 to the zero power, it's equal to one. What if it's a negative number to the zero power? Still equal to one, so negative 29, the whole thing to the zero power is one. But what if we don't have the parentheses? What if it's negative 29 to the 0 power? Well, then we do 29 to the 0 power is 1, and we make that negative. So we have negative 1, because we raise 29 to the 0 power to get 1, then we apply the negative. All right, your next one, part D, is a problem to try on your own. So go ahead and try that, and then we'll go over it in class. All right, example three, we're going to write with only positive exponents. So it may feel like we're kind of start, stopping partway through the problem, but our goal is just to get positive exponents, just to practice using the, the definition of negative exponents. So we have 6 to the negative 5, so that's just going to be 1 over 6 to the 5th, and we're going to stop there. We're just going to leave it there. It's written without any uh, negative exponents, so we'll go ahead and stop. 2x to the negative 4 power. 1 over 2x to the 4th power. Again, we make note that x is not equal to 0. That's just because we can't divide by 0, so we don't want a 0 down there. It's written without, um, with only positive exponents, so we are done. For c, we have negative 7 times p to the negative 4, p not equal to 0. All right, that's awesome. So let's first, let's look, let's apply the, neg the negative uh, part of the exponent there, so that's going to be negative 7 times 1 over p to the 4th. Well, we can go ahead, technically it's written without the positive exponents, but let's go ahead and multiply the 7, negative 7, excuse me. So we get negative 7 over p to the 4th, p is not equal to 0. For the next one, I'm going to let that be a problem to try on your own. Write that expression without negative exponents. All right, now we're going to evaluate. So we're going to we're going to apply the properties of exponents and we're going to actually simplify the powers that we get at the end. So we've got 1 over 4 to the negative 3. That just means 4 to the third power. And we want to evaluate, so we're going to go ahead and do 4 to the third power is 64. We've got 3 to the negative 3 over 9 to the negative 1. Let's go ahead and write that as 9 to the first over 3 to the third. And let's evaluate. 9 to the first is 9 over 3 to the third power is 27. And then we're going to reduce to 1 third. Okay, for example 5, 
We've got m to the 8th over m to the 13th. We're going to write with only positive exponents. If we just do m to the 8th and m to the 13th, if we do 8 minus 13, we're going to end up with negative exponents. To avoid that, remember, you look for where you have the larger power and you subtract the, the other exponent, the smaller exponent from the larger exponent. So we're going to write this as 1 over m to the 13 minus 8. So that gives us 1 over m to the 5th. And again, we have to make note that m can't be 0 because we can't divide by 0. All right, we've got 5 to the negative 6 over 5, 5 to the negative 8. If we um, just move each base to the other level, that gets rid of the negative exponents. And so we have 5 to the 8th over 5 to the 6th. And we could leave it like that because technically we've written it with positive exponents. But since they have the same base, let's apply that other property of exponent um, that lets us do 5 to the 8 minus 6 because 8 is the larger power and so 5 squared. We'll stop there because it is written with positive exponents and we can't apply any more rules of exponents. All right, let's do x cubed over y to the 5th. Well, we're done. It's just equal to x cubed over y to the 5th. Different bases, nothing we can do to simplify it, and the exponents are already positive. All right, we're going to simplify. We've got r to the 5th to the 4th power, power to a power. So we multiply r to the 5 times 4, and so r to the 20. We've got negative 3 y to the 5th quantity squared. So we're going to do negative 3 squared times y to the 5th to the second power. Negative 3 squared is negative 3 times negative 3, that's 9. y to the 5 times 2, that's going to be y to the 10th. And the next one, we're going to let that be a problem to try on your own, so we will go over that in class. Okay, for example 7, we're going to write only with positive exponents and evaluate. We can do that. So when you have a fraction there, remember that negative exponent just means use the reciprocal. So we're going to have 3 halves to the 4th power. So now we're going to do 3 to the 4th power over 2 to the 4th power. 3 to the 4th power is 81. 2 to the 4th power is 16. And we are done. Example 8, we're going to simplify and express without negative exponents. We've got 4 squared to the negative 5 power. Let's go ahead and do the power to a power to get 4 to the negative 10. And so that just means 1 over 4 to the 10th. All right, I'm going to let the next one be a problem to try on your own. On part C, we've got m squared n to the negative 2 power all over m to the negative 3 times n. Um, let's go ahead and do the power to a power on top. So we're going to have m to the 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 times n to the negative 2. And on the bottom, we have m to the negative 3. And I went ahead and wrote n as n to the first just so that we can see the exponent there. All right, so again, we are going to simplify by taking the uh, smaller, the larger exponent and subtracting the smaller exponent from it. So you've got to think carefully here. Negative 3 is larger than negative 4. It doesn't have a larger absolute value, but it is a larger number. So we're going to do negative 3 minus negative 4 here on the bottom. And in the denominator, we have a power of 1 for n. In the numerator, we have negative 2. 1 is larger than negative 2. So we're going to have n to the first minus negative 2 in the denominator. And since everything was moved from the numerator, we replace it with a 1. So we have 1 over m to the negative 3 plus 4 times n to the 1 plus 2. So that gives us 1 over m to the first times n cubed. We don't usually leave um, powers of 1 in um, final answers, so we're going to write it as 1 over m times n cubed. All right, for part D, we have 2y over x cubed times 4y over x to the negative 1 power. That negative 1 means use the reciprocal. The negative means use the reciprocal. So we flip that second fraction, only the second fraction, over to x over 4y because only that second set of parentheses is raised to the negative 1 power. And so that's to the first power. So that just means we've got 2y um, times x to the first over x cubed 
well, 2y over x cubed times x to the first over 4y. So the y's are going to cancel completely. The 2 will cancel with the 4 and leave you a 2 in that denominator. And then let's see, for x we've got a power of 3 in this denominator, a power of 1 in this numerator, so it's going to end up in the denominator. And we're going to have x to the 3 minus 1. So we're going to end up with an x squared there. So 1 times 1 is 1 x squared times 2 is 2x squared. So we have 1 over 2x squared. Okay, so we're going to simplify and express without negative exponents. And we have r squared to the third power times s to the fifth over r cubed s squared quantity squared. So let's start simplifying. 2 times 3 is 6, so we're going to have r to the sixth times s to the fifth. 3 times 2 is 6, so we're going to have r to the 6. 2 times 2 is 4, so we're going to have s to the 4th. The r to the 6s will cancel out completely. The larger power of s is on top, so we're going to have s to the 5 minus 4 on top. Everything canceled out of the bottom, so we have a 1. If there's a 1 in the denominator, we don't have to leave it in our final answer. And so we just have s to the 1st, or just s, is our final answer. And for part B, we're going to leave that to be a problem to try on your own. Make sure that you complete that to get full credit for your notes. And that is it. That is all for this lesson. Thank you for taking great notes and for watching the video. Uh, I hope you have a great day, and I will see you in class.